Amazon QuickSight Q is a deep learning add-on to QuickSight that uses state-of-the-art machine learning and natural language technology to empower your users to ask questions about their data and get answers instantly. I'm Priya Mysore, a Senior Technical Program Manager within the Amazon QuickSight team. And in this video, I will walk you through how you can get started with QuickSight Q as an author. As you can see here, I'm logged into QuickSight as an author. On the left-hand side, I have my analyses, dashboards, datasets, and with the introduction of Q, you see a new link called Topics. Topics are a collection of one or more datasets that represent a subject area, such as sales, marketing, etc. There are five easy steps to creating and managing a topic. The first step is the creation of the new topic itself. Provide a user-friendly name and description for the topic. Topic name is how your users will identify and select the topic to ask questions. Users will be able to see the description for more details about a topic. So make sure the name and description are clear for your users. Then we will add a data set to this topic. In this demo, we used the SaaS sales data set. After the topic is created, the authors are directed to the topic summary page. This summary acts as a landing page and has three important areas. Suggestions at the top, statistics that show topic engagement and performance over time, and the data set section. Authors can add additional data sets by clicking Add Data Sets and update data set related metadata by expanding the data set cards. The next step is to go to the Data tab and review the fields along with their settings to improve answer accuracy. For instance, update friendly names so users can easily understand the contents of each field. Add synonyms to cover all various terminology, like city could be used as location and town. Review and set semantic type on each field to help you understand the context of what's stored in your data. For instance, setting the city to location tells Q that it is a geographic field. Then, exclude fields that are not relevant for answering business questions, like ID fields, contact ID, customer ID, and so on. The most important thing to ensure you and your users have a great experience with Q is to spend some time in the data tab and curate the topic. Now let's look at an example for a measure called discount. When you ask Q questions about this field, for instance, show me discount by product, you can let Q know that the default aggregation you want to apply to this field is an average and not a sum. You can also specify the format as shown here. Now let's look at customer dimension. You can set semantic types on this field to indicate that it is a person, so Q can answer who type questions. In addition to setting the semantic type, you can also set the default aggregation to count or count distinct for a dimensional object like customer. So let's try an example. If I want to ask Q, how many customers are there in healthcare? Q should return a unique count based on the field settings. As you can see here, you can fine-tune your topic's field settings to improve answer accuracy where necessary. Now let's also ask a who type question. Let's say, who had the highest sales in EMEA? As you can see here, Q will now associate who to a customer because the semantic type for that field is set to a person. Now, let's look at some other configurations you can do within a topic. You can define what's called a named entity. A named entity is a logical grouping of fields, of related fields together. 
Let's take the example of customer details. When I ask a question about customer details, I would like to see, in addition to the customer, additional attributes of that customer, such as region, segment, country, product, contact name, discount, and sales. Now let's try a question with this named entity. I'm going to ask, show me customer details for, let's say, Pfizer, maybe. Yep. Q now returns a table with customer information along with the related attributes that are defined. This is a pretty powerful feature. You can also create calculated fields and set filters within the topic as well. Once you have finished the initial curation of your topic and have tested a few questions, you can now share your topic to your readers. Sharing the topic allows your readers to have access to the Q navigation bar where they can start asking questions using simple natural language to get insights. You can continuously review the questions and feedback coming from your users by going into the user activity tab. As you see here, you, you have visibility to all the questions your business users are asking on this topic. Let's take an example. If you look at the first question, who had the highest sales in EMEA? You are able to see the answer in the exact way the user has seen the answer. You are able to look at the feedback and also the fields that were selected from the data set to go into that answer. You can also filter by negative feedback and see what your users have provided in the comments. For example, show me sales forecast in EMEA is received negative feedback. Let's take a look at the answer. As you can clearly see, Q has only given a sum of sales for EMEA and has omitted the forecast, as forecasting capability is still being planned. In this scenario, to help their end users, as an author, you can fix the answer by linking it to an existing visual on a dashboard. In this case, the SAS sales dashboard has a forecasting visual pre-built. So in this particular use case, you are able to link the question to a pre-built visual on the dashboard. This is really useful in such cases. Now, the end user, when they ask the question again, will now receive a linked visual from the dashboard. As you can see here, this ability to see all of your user activity is pretty powerful. This allows an author to build better insights for their end users. Now let's look at the last tab, which is verified answers. You can select certain answers and mark them as reviewed. It brings in a check mark next to the answer. And this builds trust and confidence with your end users that this question or answer has been reviewed by someone in the BI team. These reviewed questions also become getting started questions for your readers. Another important feature I want to highlight here is a custom message. You can inform your business users that certain metrics are not available in this data to ask questions on. So you can guide them by providing keywords. In this case, let's say you're measuring your sales revenue to its target. We don't have target in this data set. So you can add a keyword and when a user asks questions on that keyword, it'll prompt them or it'll give them a custom message. For example, show me sales and target for APJ. Now, Q will return an answer that says, we do not support questions about target at this time, and tell the topic owner. The end user can actually give the author more information on why that's relevant or not relevant, and the importance of bringing that element to the topic. 
So you can select from a list of dropdowns as you see here, pick the most appropriate one in this scenario, and provide some contextual information in the, in the comments section. Need target information because it's critical to my business, as an example. Now, once the user submits this data, your author will be able to see that right away. It says here that this question has a comment and has a negative feedback, as you can see here. The author can also review other questions that's come from the user and mark, mark those as reviewed if, if they're more commonly asked questions. As you see here, the green check mark indicates that this answer has been reviewed and approved by the author. This is a pretty powerful uh, feature. It builds trust instantly uh, with the end user. Once you enable Q on your account, you are able to now install any of the six sample topics that's available in various domains. To summarize, what are the key benefits of Q for authors? Authors provide business context to data. This allows their readers to ask questions in the domain language that they're familiar with. Authors know exactly what their users are asking. They're able to see this in the user activity tab and address any negative feedback. Authors use this feedback to improve data sets as well as dashboards. Authors can also provide guided questions by verifying answers. These become getting started questions for your readers. Authors are thereby enabling self-service analytics to their organization. You can learn more by going to our QuickSight Q documentation page. You can also attend a virtual author workshop that discusses advanced topic modeling concepts. And visit our QuickSight community page at community.amazonquicksight.com. Hope this video was informative. And if you'd like to enable QuickSight Q on your account, please contact your QuickSight administrator. Thank you for watching.